Welcome to this episode of Spacecraft Guide. The channel describes how the most iconic spacecraft in history work. This episode will be a premiere since it's the end of the month. And what we'll be seeing is how the guidance navigation uh, system works on the Apollo spacecraft. And we will be showing who won the shout out competition for this month. This is a gyroscope, and it uses centripetal force, a spinning wheel, to balance itself. But another thing it does is it keeps its inner orientation no matter how you move its base. Because of the ability to keep its orientation, or aeronautical engineers could use it as artificial horizon to flying clouds. Aerospace engineers use this device to create a stable platform for spacecraft to navigate in space. Here is the Inertial Measuring Unit, or the IMU. It is a device which measures the orientation of the spacecraft. It uses gyroscopes to create a stable platform from which changes in orientation can be measured. In order for the ship to move around the stable platform, the stable platform is put into a mechanical device which uses rings, as you see here, to allow movement along the X, Y, and Z axis, thus giving full range of motion in every direction. These rings are, mechan are a mechanical device called gimbals and by measuring the angles between the gimbals we measure orientation of the spacecraft and display it on the flight director attitude indicator FDAI. The flight director attitude indicator FDAI is a display of the spacecraft's orientation as it moves through space. It gets its information from gyros that make up the stable platform in the IMU, which measures the angles in between the gimbals. The FDAI is not like a mechani mechanical attitude indicator as it has no internal gyro so it can be controlled by the computer. The beauty of an attitude indicator is that it gives information in an image, and we all know that a picture is worth a thousand words, but in this case, a thousand gauges. With one glance, the astronaut can tell in an instant the orientation of his craft. Not only can see if he is right side up, but they can tell the amount of pitch, roll, and yaw. You can even tell if you were getting into a dangerous situation like gimbal lock. This is the computer interface called the DISCI. Like everything in aviation, it is an acronym used to save time because of the possibility of hyper time critical situation. This key stands for Display Keyboard. It has many functions, but we are going to focus on three. The first is the program, which the astronauts is using. The next is the verb, which is the command you want to execute. Last is the noun, which is the thing you want executed in the program. Since the computer had limited memory, it used digits instead of names to run the program. There is a master list of the codes and associated functions. This is very easy to understand and you do it every day. For example, let's say you want to work on your paper on Apollo 8. First, you would open the program, which would be Word. In this case, Word is named 77. 
then you would se se select the function you would like to do or the verb. In this case is open the paper, which is labeled 31. And the thing you want to do, the, the paper that you want to open to work on your program in your program word is your paper called Apollo 8. Here is 33. So what you want to do is you want to open the program called Word and you want to open the file called Apollo 8. Then you would select enter and just like you do now the paper would pop up on your computer interface. If we look at this program that uh, the, com the astronauts are running it's program 77 and that's the uh, command service module target Delta V which basically means the spaceship that's going to the to the moon want they want to know what their target change in velocity is the next is verb 31 which is request weightless which wait list which means they're looking for information that'll help them get to the moon and then finally time of ignition and that's what they're requesting the information on so they're trying to find out what their change in velocity will be and they want a list of it for their time of ignition this month's winner of our shout out competition goes to space association of australia incorporated tv and their YouTube channel, which you can see I've subscribed to. Another interesting thing is when this comes out, they are scheduled to have their February public meeting for hypersonic, hypersonic launch system, greener aviation tech, aerospace technology. So I'd like to shout out to them. Thank you for making your comment about our, uh, our channel and what we can do and how you like our new video uh, tool that we're using and once again if you like us please like share subscribe tell all your friends down below and leave a comment on what you think about this video and if you really like to help us out and support us please go to our patreon page where you can see our interactive virtual reality exhibit of the Apollo 11 spacecraft. Thank you for your support. As a preview, I want to show you how you use the Spacecraft Interactive Virtual Reactive Museum. So you can see, you can zoom in. We can zoom in to here and you can actually click on these globes to fix or to find out what everything does and you can zoom back out and take a look at everything then you can scroll around you can see we have the back of the spacecraft uh, we also have uh, what we use on the window markings and the observation window we have that for you but then the other great thing is you can go into the other parts of the spacecraft. You can go into the lunar module by clicking on that. And as you can see, everything is hyperlinked here. Go all the way to the back. We have the guidance navigation control, the ascent cover. All of these are linked and you can take a look at them but here is the great part down here if you click on this you get the landing site of Apollo 17 so you get to see the landing site and then you can explore further and go to the specific spots and you can see the panorama And 
then when you want to go back you find the dot and you can click on that and then just if you want to go back into the spacecraft you just click on that hyperlink and then if you want to go back to the command module you have to go up to the hatch there it is see we can we explain about the docking hatch and then you can go back the command module so that is just an overview of what you can find when you uh, join our patreon page and uh, join our patreon page we give you access to this and again you can join the link will be below in the notes Thank you for your support.